um, it's a pity Harriet and Bella and Alison Elliott aren't here because they have looked quite carefully at asthma in Antibia over the last 15 years or so, and oddly enough, um, no difference between rural and urban populations. And they have followed a cohort from birth who are now about 15 years old, I think. And, and also no relation to parasitic infections, interestingly. That's interesting, isn't it? So it'd be really interesting to see what the well, it's interesting, isn't it? Because neither did the the Americans nor the Central Europeans and Eric from Mutrius was working in in the farms in Austria and southern Germany. And she originally thought that it was other pasteurised milk, which was the microbial exposure, but probably something that we don't. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for the presentation of asthma and the allergens in general. My question is whether we'll look at asthma and the allergens in general, a topic, a topic uh, dramatized. Is there a question of a biome that is uh, we as humans and what is surrounding us, the, the, the other organisms, do they make um, do they make what, what is it? Do they contribute to to our condition or our predicament? And uh, specifically, let me ask you about: uh, Has there been any, any specific relationship between, let's say, asthma and uh, hookworms, for instance? Uh, hookworms, the country Americans. Because it is claimed in some parts that uh, this could actually be protected. Thank you so much. Yeah. There is some data on hookworm infestation being protected against asthma. Um, I'm not sure whether it's protected against ACP. I need to defer to my ID colleagues on that one. Um, but it's not the general. Um, it's not a general pattern seen from other parasitic infections, as far as I'm aware. In terms of microbiome, I think, I think you alluded to the microbiome, the airway microbiome. Um, well, it's a work in progress. So the things we're seeing in terms of the, uh, the serious the population are uh, Hemophilus influenzae, Morax alicatarabis being really potent triggers of uh, exacerbation. But in terms of the subtle differences, yes, as you say, there are differences between healthies and asthmatics. Uh, in terms of their overall microbiome diversity. Um, how that helps us, I don't know. In the, in the EU, we've got a major program going called eBioPred, which attempts to look at all of those things and draw out, hopefully, diagnostic or prognostic markers from, for example, sampling the microbiome and from the other But it's a work that's, that's at an early stage. One more question. Yeah, that's great. Uh, thank you very much for the presentation. I'm Bruce Chilenga from Makerere University. I have some comments and two questions. Uh, quick comments, the uh, issue of the worms. Yeah. We have data from three countries, Ethiopia, Kenya, and Uganda. Yeah. And we have found very few worms, less right. than one percent. Right. In asthma patients. Yes. And this was very surprising for us. Okay. And we are looking for answers because in the general population, for example, in Uganda, it's about 8, 10% worms, but in asthmatics, we didn't see them. I wanted to ask you that question, so I'm glad you answered it. <laughs> so, um, and uh, another comment on obesity. On? Um, obese people obesity. and asthma. Yeah. We have also seen um, a uh, high rate of obesity in asthmatics compared to the general population. Mm -hmm. And the other comment is we are also seeing a smaller divide between urban and rural and asthma here. And all those things we are still looking for answers, but we think uh, this lack of a difference between urban and rural could be confounded by things like biomass smoke, indoor air pollution. Yeah. So, coming to my two questions. I wanted to ask you um, any new developments 
in um, how we can diagnose asthma in the service, because this is a challenge. Um, I saw you made a comment, in most surveys actually the diagnosis of asthma is really shaky because based on free evidence. Yes. Maybe if there is anything new. The other one was a comment on primary, primary prevention of asthma, especially in children, as a guts allergy. Yeah. I saw a graph where you showed after one of the graphs, after uh, corticosteroids. Then. So could we consider that for primary prevention for asthma in the general population? So, so we, we so I'll answer the uh, the second bit first. Um, so in terms of the inherent cause of the steroids, that was the sensitization exposure virus um, uh, study from Claire Murray, and what she showed right at the end. I didn't chose not to discuss that column in the interest of time, but. Uh, it very clearly shows a very significant reduction in exacerbation and exacerbation frequency with the use of inhaled steroids, which you know, which which is just common sense. So, um, I mean, that, that's an important topic in itself. And I saw some of your data yesterday, and have some idea of what your use of what your patients are like when they come to you before they've seen you in terms of their uptake of inhaled corticosteroids. There's differences between that and the <coughs> higher income countries. In terms of primary prevention, uh, we haven't got any good data, um, haven't got any good strategies for primary prevention of allergic asthma. We better understand um, the effects of cat and dog allergen exposure now. There is an exposure um, response relationship such that um, at higher levels of cat and dog allergen exposure in early life, if you have a certain genotype, you may actually be protected from cat and dog allergy if you have more cat and dogs. Okay, so that's a complicated message. It's taken about 15 years to, to tease out. Um, when you've got a patient in front of you, though, asking, should I get a cat for my daughter or son, or should I get a second cat? It's still very difficult to answer because those genotype SNP tests are not widely available. So they've told us that much. Um, in terms of the diagnosis of asthma, as a hard one, um, and we can have a chat about that afterwards. I, I, I don't know the answer to that. Um, I really don't. Thank you very much to Robin. Give him another round of applause and thank you for your extra questions.